I am a child, born and bred of flesh, slaughtered and consumed in the name of rebirth. I was a thief, not chasing the seconds of the clock, but rather the heavy shadows beneath street lamps, quivering and enmeshed in constant paranoia, not of the covenant with thy maker, but with the rash texture like smothered flesh of an imprisoned mortality. So I turn on his way by the twist of a dumb I was aided by the cloak of a heavenly mother in defense of a visible friend. I am an only child with soul visions of precious fruit. I am an only child with soul visions of precious fruit. I am an only child. I am an only child. supposed to be yours and your sister's money, not your mother's, whether or not she thinks differently. You know I love you, right? Look at me. Take a break from that for a second. I need to tell you something. I trust you, son. I know you're not mine, but I think I've always treated you as if you were. I know you might not like me, but I want you to know I'm proud of you. I want you to hold on to this. It's my bonus. I want you to hide it and buy you and your sister some nice gifts, okay? Promise me that no matter what, you'll not give any of it to your mother. I love you, son. No human being in the English-speaking world can pronounce the word taste in just the way that a certain kind of American pronounces it. It is incredible to hear it. It sounds something like taste. It sounds amazing, and it's too rich to be true. It is pronounced by an American who has been abroad, and who has been to Harvard, or Columbia, and who might be rich, but not necessarily. Let us look at him, at this rare, strange creature. Let us hear him say, But my dear Tom, just where is your sense of taste? Just where he got the idea that living was a matter of taste. Only God can say, from books written in Europe by continental phenomenal snobs, from some strange, dark, lonely notion that all the wilderness and brutality and vast sweep of American life can be cancelled in one swoop by the word taste, it is hard to say. But Thomas Wolfe has already covered the satirical aspects of this phenomena, and I leave it to any amateur psychologist to decide the rest. It is unimportant. body lies only about 20 feet in front of us. Donna, I'm sorry. I grab my mother's trembling hand, and as we walk towards the coffin, our grief coalesced into a union which superficially and temporarily bonded us. Chris, Chris, you want to both miss her? I was surprised I did not choke up. I wanted to cry. 
I think what made me strong was that I, I knew it was not my own inside that coffin. Somewhere beneath the broken and bruised exterior was the pulse that was truly my aunt. Now she was gone, and in fact she had been for a while. The liquor and drugs were only an attempt to deny that, but the constant beatings delivered by her series of lovers confirmed that there was nothing left. It is hard to face death. While we kneeled on that velvet-covered pedestal and, held, and I held my aunt's hands, Especially when it is your own. I can see that her body gave the impression of a different person. Although I did not realize who it was at first, I quickly understood that it was my mother inside that coffin. Come on, Chris, I really need that money. Chris, can you give me the money? Where is it? Donna, I'm sorry. I straightened my tie and dug my hands deeper into my pocket. 